Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part 13, I'm not superstitious, of my uh, Tesla earnings forecast video review series. I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Loki, who's hanging out in bed. You can keep an eye on him in the Loki cam. Let's make sure that's framed up all right. There, keep that ear in the shot for my friend Loki there. And uh, I'll show you my desktop where I have another one of the charts from my Tesla earnings forecast tweet thread. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to go check that out. Uh, so what's this labeled? It's my February 18th of 23 estimate for uh, Tesla's Q1 2023 revenues and expenses per diluted share. So everybody talks about EPS, earnings per share. Few people talk about everything else per share. But I thought that would be helpful for people to understand, hey, uh, James, you're forecasting gap EPS of 89 cents, non-gap EPS of $1.01, and adjusted non-gap EPS of 93 cents. Where's that coming from? Uh, I thought that it would be helpful to see that on a visualization, which is what we've got here. So there's two bars, two stacked bars here. One of those shows where Tesla gets its revenue from. Tesla has three operating divisions, meaning uh, parts of the company that uh, people pay Tesla for stuff, uh, products and services. Those are the automotive segment, so auto revenue is in this lightest green color here. I've got $6.68 worth of automotive revenue in my forecast. Then there's the energy division, which I'm forecasting 51 cents per share worth of revenue in Q1. And all other revenue, 57 cents here. This is stuff like uh, the uh, parts and service uh, repair uh, work that Tesla does. Sales of used vehicles go in here. Uh, tales, uh, sales of Tesla merchandise are in here. Uh, the Tesla insurance business is in here, etc. So uh, 57 cents worth of uh, revenue per share coming from the all other revenue area. And combined, these three make for, you know, almost $8 per share worth of total revenue for Tesla. What's this other bar doing with the, the different shades of gray here? These are all of Tesla's expenses. So you can see uh, 528 worth of automotive cost of sales per share uh, to go with the $6.68 worth of uh, automotive revenue. So, you know, $1.40 per share worth of automotive gross margin. If you take the difference between this number and that number, then what's the energy division contributing? Well, 51 cents per share of revenue minus 41 cents per share of energy division cost of sales makes a gross margin contribution of 10 cents from energy, then only a very tiny fraction of uh, contribution from all other uh, 57 cents worth of revenue minus 54 cents worth of cost of sales leaves only three cents worth of gross margin there. So uh, are those the only expenses? No, there's other expenses <laughs> that Tesla has to pay for. Uh, so research and development is going to cost about 20 cents per share, I'm forecasting. And then all other, uh, including SG&A and taxes and stuff, about 31 cents. Uh, the other one that you see here, the lightest of the gray colors, is the total stock-based compensation. Why do I have that here? Because it's the difference between the GAP EPS and the non-GAP EPS. Okay, so this is how much revenue we have, this total bar here. We've spent all of this money uh, in cash expenses from here down. Uh, so that money's gone. So what's left? Well, the stock-based compensation and the GAP EPS is what's left. Stock compensation is a non-cash expense. Tesla doesn't have to pay out cash. They don't have to buy the stock off the open market to give to employees for compensation. They can just create the shares and give them to their employees as part of their compensation. So that's the difference between GAP EPS and non-GAP EPS. GAP says, 
hey, that's real expense, even if it's non-cash. You need to take the hit for that before you say what your earnings per share are. So that's how you get to the 89 cents. The dollar one here is saying the, the Wall Street analysts uh, who are analyzing the stock see this 12 cents as being non-cash. It's not a cash drain on the company to pay for the stock-based compensation. Loki really wants to hammer home that point. So, uh, oh, buddy, it's okay. It's okay, Loki. He gets fired up talking about stock-based compensation. But uh, that's the dollar one worth of non-GAAP EPS. That's the number Wall Street cares about and will report. Then for the adjusted non-GAAP EPS of 93 cents, what's that? Well, I've got a forecast for eight cents worth of benefit uh, from deferred tax assets being claimed by Tesla in Q1 of 2023. So if they do that, and if you want to back that out of the non-GAAP EPS number, that would leave you with adjusted non-GAAP EPS of 93 cents. All right. Uh, that's my video for today. Uh, you know, uh, Loki is just as fired up to end the video as he was to begin it. And uh, with that, I'll say if you like today's video, click the like button uh, or leave a comment below. It's free to do either of those things. And uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, you can do that right over here. Thank you to everyone who supports me, either by joining Patreon, where you can get early access to my videos the day I upload them, or by joining my YouTube channel, especially my uh, executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Halter Ferguson Financial, who joined at the top support tier level. And I'll see you in the next one.